we go to the Word. <clears throat> out of the abundance of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart. Go with me, please, to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Beginning to read verse 34. Matthew 12, beginning to read verse 34. <clears throat> o generation of vipers, how could you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. And that's my message, out of the abundance of the heart. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of an evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Shall we pray? Lord, speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, there's a treasure in our heart. It's a treasure where we're storing up either wrath or goodness. And out of that abundance, our mouth will speak. And we're going to be judged on that day when we stand before you for all those things that we have spoken. Everything has come out of our mouths. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Now, Lord, speak clearly to us tonight. And I pray for the unction, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that nobody leave this house tonight without being deeply affected by the word, touched and moved and transformed, I pray. I need you, Holy Spirit. I can't speak. I can't do anything without your anointing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, according to Jesus, there's a treasury in us. That is our heart. And that's where we make deposits. And that's where we make debits. We pay out of that treasury. The United States government has a treasury. And all the revenues of the nation go into that treasury. And all the bills are paid out of that treasury. Now, it should be that nothing uh, goes out but what goes in. Our government is trying to uh, say that they can take out more than they put in. But you take out in kind what you put into the treasury. And for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Our God has narrowed down those deposits into this treasury into two kinds. Two kinds of deposits only. He said we are either storing up wrath or we're storing up goodness. One of two things. You can't store up anything else than wrath, storing up wrath. And here's the scripture. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. He said those that are hearing the word and not obeying, he, those that are hearing the word, and not walking in the light of it. They're storing up wrath against the day of judgment. They're depositing into this heart treasury all kinds of wrath that they'll have to stand and answer for on the judgment day. Now, every day of our lives, you and I are treasuring up, the scripture says, either wickedness and wrath or the good things in life that lead to eternal life. I want you to picture... For me, we're talk, talking about deposits into this heart treasury. Let's talk about the millions of women and some men who are sitting day by day in front of a television set watching TV soap operas. Now, folks, listen to me and hear me good. Among those millions watching are many, many thousands who call themselves by the name of Jesus Christ. And they are sitting there making one deposit after another. Some watch five days a week. Can you imagine the deposits that are going into this treasury, into this bank of the heart? Can you imagine how many uh, uh, adulterous scenes, how many covetous scenes, how much revenge, how much manipulation, how the mind is jaded, how the mind is bombarded by these visions that they see? So that when their husbands come home, they, I, they try to project what they've seen on television into their own lives. And you show me a Christian woman who's sitting day by day in front of a television set and swallowing this garbage. And I'm going to tell you it's going to mess up your marriage, your children, and your home. And if you're sitting in this church tonight, 
and you are sitting there watching that filth, I'm telling you the time will come that it will absolutely destroy your home and your marriage. You cannot make deposits into this treasury with that filth, that ugliness, the most ugly, filthy television in the earth today are daytime soap operas. You cannot be an overcoming Christian and watch it. You can't. It's impossible. Don't go to some counselor. Don't go to your pastor after you see, after you fed your mind on that, because what is in your mind is going to come out your mouth. It's going to come out. You will speak it. You'll speak the language. You'll, you, you will speak the despair that you have imbibed and taken into your life and imbibed into your spirit. You cannot watch this filth. It's absolutely impossible. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Gentlemen, the same goes for pornography. Any wicked, immoral movie or TV program. The man who indulges in pornography is going to think dirty, he's going to talk dirty, and he's going to listen and tell dirty jokes. I can always tell a man who's into pornography because whatever you deposit in your mind and your heart is going to come out your mouth. Out of the abundance it's, it's called an abundance. It's a constant feeding into this treasury. It's building up and building up. I, I have been in restaurants and, and there'll be 10 or 12 preachers around and there'll be one of them tell a, uh, try to tell a dirty joke. Those who love Jesus get up and walk away from the table. Or they'll rebuke him publicly. But you know that that man, if he's going to sit around a table with pastors and talk dirty and give a dirty joke, you, can you imagine what is in his mind? You, sir, go ahead and get that video, that dirty video, and put it in the little slot. Feed your mind on that. Build up these scenes in the treasure of your heart. And I tell you, it will come out. You will be exposed. It will be exposed. It will come out. You cannot be an overcoming Christian and feed this treasure of your heart on this filth and garbage. And folks... Sadly, this is a terrible tragedy and sin in the ministry today. Terrible, terrible tragedy. And folks, you can tell it when the man preaches, he tells jokes from the pulpit. And some of them just don't sound straight and right. There's something in your spirit if you're walking with God, say, how can that man not take the things of God seriously? Because when a man feeds himself on that, he doesn't take life seriously. And, and he will try, if he's married, to get his wife to indulge in the kind of stuff that he's watching. He'll try to lead you finally into sadism. He will lead you into filth. He will lead you down the path. Sister, if you're a Christian, you don't have to go that way with your husband. You don't have to walk with him that. You rebuke him in the name of the Lord. You say, I'm going to report it to the pastor. <laughs> we can assure you that if they're in any kind of leadership in this church, they, they'll be dealt with kindly but firmly. You better believe firm. We're talking about storing up in the treasury of the heart. What about this prosperity gospel that so many are involved in now? One man who was into this, he was so saturated with it, that's all he could see in the scripture. Everything he said, everything he saw, he would go through Proverbs and Psalms, every scripture verse, and he was so slanted in this direction, there was no balance in his life, because he shut himself up in a garage with every prosperity tape of every preacher he could get, and he shut himself in, I think, for 30 days in his garage and saturated his mind with it. No wonder that's all he talks about. That's what he... That's, that's the deposit he, he made. What's ever in your heart, in abundance, will come out your mouth. Young people, let's talk about your music. Now listen to me, please. Christian young people, you say, 
what's wrong with listening to the militant rap music? Now, folks, everywhere you look in the city of New York, you see them going with their uh, blasters, going down the street, and rap music. But, folks, I can't understand a word of it, but they can understand it. And when you look at the lyrics, go into the record store and turn over, look at the lyrics. And folks, it's demeaning to women. It's demeaning to Jesus Christ. It's demeaning to morality. And young people, if you say, well, Brother Wilkes, that's my music. I'm of a different generation than you are. And you feed your mind in, with the lyrics, the militant, anti-Christ, anti-everything. Who is the Lord of your life anyhow? Some drug-crazed rapper? Uh, some drug-crazed hard rocker? Or is it Jesus Christ who's the Lord of your heart? For out of an evil treasury, they'll bring forth evil things. You treasure up evil, even music, then out of it is going to come evil. You say, Brother Wilkerson, are, are, are you rebuking us for our music? Well, listen to what the scripture said. It's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the music of fools. You don't believe that's in your Bible? It's in Ecclesiastes 7.5. My Bible said you're to sing a new song before the throne. And the song you sing now, young person, right here on this continent, the song you sing now is the song that you're going to have to take to the judgment. I hope it's a song of praise and glory to the name of Jesus. Either make the tree good and the fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. Let's talk about... Uh, America's number one babysitter. Saturday morning cartoons. We're talking about feeding the treasury. That little child of yours has a heart that's a treasury, according to the scripture. And, and you're too busy Saturday at your day off, so you just go in there and turn on the television and say, it's just cartoons. Have you seen what they are anymore? Have you? watched? Have you seen? I don't have that, so I I, I don't, I, I can't tell, but the, the last I saw of it, and that's been a long time ago, even the Walt Disney stuff was all new age. And these are dragons and monsters. Everybody's mowing everybody down, cutting off everybody's head. It's new age. It's violent. Can you imagine the little children, the treasury? Can you imagine the input? Can you imagine what's going to come out of their mouths in years to come? Dad, Mom, have you ever seen? I, I hope that in this church we have parents that know better than that. What about your school kids that come home and they are fed uh, even in seventh grade here now, uh, they're teaching uh, uh, preteeners how to use condoms. And your child comes home full of all this garbage from the public schools and you know it. Do you take time to get the spiritual hose and hose them down in their minds and their spirit by the word of the Lord? And, and just, you know that there's been a deposit every day, deposit after deposit of new age, deposit of, of all kinds of promiscuity, uh, sexual promiscuity, teaching that infers that we uh, condone sex because we're providing you a way to have safe sex. Do you take the time, dad, mom, to sit down with your kids and try to deprogram by the word of God? so that the treasury of their mind is not corrupted and polluted. Now, folks, we've been talking here, I've been talking to you about this, e these evil deposits, these wrong deposits, th this building up, storing up wrath. But, folks, God also, Jesus also talks here about storing up the good. Out of good treasury, a man will bring forth good things. Now, folks, you know that's the word of God, first of all. You show me a man or woman, a Christian, that's feeding on the Word of God. I mean, just saturated with the Word of God. 
And thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin. My treasury is full of the word of God. I'll show you a Christian that cannot possibly talk about his brother or sister. He cannot possibly gossip. He cannot possibly slander anybody. It's impossible because what is in his heart is going to come out. And if he didn't deposit that, it's not going to come out. He is so full of the word of God, it has pushed everything else out of his mind and out of his spirit. There's an abundance of the word of God. That's why we beg you and plead with you to saturate your mind. Make deposits, daily deposits of the word of God into your spirit. You know also that the praises of God, the wonderful praises of God, are so very, very vital in these days. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Out of a good treasury. It's good to praise the Lord. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. For out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. You know it's a good thing to draw nigh unto God. God is the strength of my heart, David said. He is my portion forever, for it's God, for it is God, for, it is good for me. We're talking about a good treasury, a good heart. It is good for me to draw near to God. I put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Now, I want to take you into another portion of this scripture. I want you to go to verse 43 now. Jesus gives a parable here that explains where I want to take you now. We're still talking about the treasure of the heart. Verse 43. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than themselves. They enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Now, I, I, want, I want everybody in this church tonight, everybody hearing me, that has had a besetting sin. You have been bound by habit, drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, gossip, uh, eating disorder, whatever it may be. I'm telling you now that this scripture... Is, is giving us a clue, a warning, first of all, then I want to take you into the Word of God and show you how I believe you can have absolute freedom. And I want you, if you've ever been on drugs or alcohol, if you've got a besetting sin, if you're fighting an overwhelming temptation, you've got to hear me tonight. Ask God right now to give you a hearing ear, to give you an understanding, because it's the truth that sets you free. You don't need a psychiatrist. You don't need a psych psychologist. You don't need a medical doctor. You need to hear the living word of God tonight, and that alone can set you free. You don't need a how-to book. You don't need a thousand tapes. You need to hear the word of the Lord from your pastor tonight. All right, let, let's go into this now. You know that no unclean spirit goes out of a person unless that's through the power of God in prayer. So this man's been prayed for. This man has had the demon exercised from him. The demon is gone. Absolutely delivered. This man is swept and clean. He's cleaned, cleansed of demon possession. The devil's been swept out. But Jesus goes on to say the house was garnished. You know what that word means? Decorated and furnished. It was decorated and furnished. Fully decorated and furnished. Now, let me ask you a question. Why would this demon, when he's already been cast out, still call it my house? Because he said, I will return to my house. You know that no demon in the world would dare call it his house if the Holy Ghost was living there, abiding, and the heart was fully furnished with the things of God. And no demon in hell would dare go near that house. He would not call it my house. Not when it belongs to the Holy Ghost. Not when it's full of the word of God. Not when righteousness is beaming from every door and window and nook and corner. Nook and corner. No. It's been furnished all right. But this man who is swept and clean, I don't know where he put 
all the garbage that was cast out, but he found it and he started bringing it back in. He was clean for a while, but he was not delivered. There are many of you sitting here right now who have had a, a, a cleansing. You, you've given your heart to Jesus. Power of the devil was broken. And your mind is empty. Your heart is empty, so to speak, has been clean. There's no question about the cleansing power of the blood. There's no question. I'm not going to doubt that God did a good work in you. But what's happening now? Has it been a week ago, two weeks ago? Has it been a year ago? You see, the devil can't read your mind, but he can sure see how you move your furniture around. He knows what you're moving into the mind. He watches every move that you make. He sees what you're reading. He sees what you're watching. He knows what's going in the heart. And he sees you stuffing that house, this treasury. He sees you bringing it all back in, all of that first. And he, you're, you're going back to decorating with the same old place. You're going to the same places. You're watching the same thing, talking the same talk that you were delivered from. And this is the situation. Here, here you are. The devil comes. And folks, I don't want you. I don't want anybody hearing me now in, on, on tape or in this church. I don't want anybody to face what Jesus is warning us about here now. The terrible end of a person like this. The terrible end of having seven times the bondage they ever had before. If you thought it was hard... If you thought it was difficult with this single possession, what's it like when it's seven times worse? Seven times as bad. Remember how bad it was. Seven times worse. So then it behooves us, doesn't it, to say, oh God, put in my hands, put in my mind the truth that will set me free. And I'm talking about putting into your mind tonight. I'm going to put into your mind the truth that if you will take it and treasure it and feed on it. If you have to get the tape, if you can't afford it, we'll give it to you. And listen to it until it becomes a part of your life. Because it is life and death. I'm going to give you what I call God's pattern for complete deliverance. God's pattern. Because everything in the Old Testament, the Bible said, is a pattern for those of us who are living at the last days. It's an example. It's a pattern. And you find that in the work of God among the children of Israel and delivering them out of Egypt. Look at me, please. Egypt is a type of your bondage. That's where the furnace of fire was. That's where they made bricks without straw. It was bondage. It was a type of your habit. A type of your besetting sin that still grips you and holds you and you fight and you pray and you plead. And yet the temptation is there and sometimes you fall back. And God wants you to be free. And he's made provision by his truth. So please put on your Holy Ghost thinking cap. And listen to me, please. I want to give you... Four steps. I'm not much for three steps to do this, four steps, but I don't any, know any other way to outline this for you than this. All right, listen to me, please. Deliverance from Satan's bondage always begins with a call to glorious freedom. What God will do, he'll paint you a picture. He may show you somebody that has the freedom or he may give you a taste of it where you have walked for 30 days, 60 days, uh, th three or four months. And suddenly there's such glorious freedom. He talks to you. He shows you a promised land of milk and honey. The milk is peace. The honey is joy. And he shows you this land. He paints it. And he, he calls you. He said, I, I want you to, I, my whole desire for you is to bring you out of your iron furnace. And, and it's named right iron. Unbreakable and terribly hot. 
He said, I want to bring you out of that iron first. I want to bring you into a place of joy and peace and glory like you have never known. Now, folks, that's where it begins. Have you seen what it's like? Have you had a little taste of what it's like to be free? Even starting out, even even moving out of where you were, and God gives you a taste of it. Moses heard that call. God said to him, I'm come down to deliver my people. I will bring them into a good land, flowing with milk and honey. And God said, I heard their cry. I'm going to deliver them. They're going to a good place. Do you have that cry in your heart? You, Tim- Timothy House, all you, those were drugs and alcohol. Do you hear me? I'm looking, you're sitting right in front of me now. I look you right in the eye. And I'm, I'm asking, have you tasted yet? Have you had a little vision of what it could be like to be totally free? And no more bondage? No more thoughts of going back? No more fear of falling? To be completely over the Red Sea and all your enemies dead? I'm talking about demons. Every demon gone? Doesn't mean you won't have, you won't have temptation and trouble, but I'm telling you that problem you have now will be gone. Once and for all and forever. God says, I've heard your cry and I'm going to come down and I'm going to take you to a good place. Hallelujah. That's the call. You have to hear that. You have to say, I don't want to go back. I am so tired. I'm so weary of the past. I want nothing to do with it. God said to Moses, it's not going to be easy, Moses. I'm sure that the king... Now, that represents your demon, the the devil himself. I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. But I will have to smite him, then he will let you go. I will have to smite him. You, You have got to come to the place where you are sick and tired of the pain, sick and tired of the suffering, sick and tired of what it's done to you, how it's turned you into a manipulator and a liar and a cheat. You've got to come to the place where you're so weary and sick of this. Oh, God, I can't take it anymore. I don't want it anymore. Why do you think Pharaoh was allowed by God to take away the straw? When God had already promised Moses he was going to deliver the children of Israel and take them to a good place. I'll tell you why. In simple language. Even though the children of Israel heard the call, said, we're ready to go. God knew that it was still in their hearts. They were not ready. God says, I've got to get this thing out. I've got to make them ready to go. I've got to make them ready to lay everything down and walk away from it. It was still there. So God intensified, intensified the problem down in Egypt. He made the problem get worse than it was so they would get really ready to go. And I'll tell you what will happen. You can say, well, I want to be free, but God knows whether you're still flirting with it, whether you still like it, or you have a little taste of it. You can say, oh, I want to be delivered. We Right backstage this morning, we, we've had a two or three, and, and almost every day on drugs, alcohol, I, I want to be free. And then the Holy Spirit, will, even though I see tears and everything else, something inside says they're not ready. Those are just crocodile tears. And so the Lord's going to take the straw away. And they're going to go back and it's going to get worse. Until finally it gets so bad. Oh God, anything, I've got to get out. He take away the straw. Everything in those stories have a meaning. Secondly, you must be totally convinced that you cannot deliver yourself from the power of your sin. You can't. You cannot break your habit. You cannot free yourself. I don't care how many promises you make. I don't care how much you cry. I don't care if you lock yourself in a room for a month. You come out the next day and you'll go right back. They call it biting a bullet. You can bite an arsenal. It's not going to free you. You have no more 
ability or power to break any habit or besetting sin, then Israel had power to deliver itself from the Egyptians without the power of God. Can you imagine what would happen if Israel just got together without Moses and said, hey, look, we don't have to go his way. Let's just, look, we've outnumbered them. Even Pharaoh says we're stronger than they are. Let, let's organize. And they got together and, and, and uh, laid out a human strategy. They were going to creep out in the middle of the night with, with clubs and bats and knives and sneak into their homes and kill all the firstborn. They would have been annihilated. They were no match for the iron chariots of Egypt. And in your human frailty, you're no match for the devil and his power. You saw his power has been defeated. I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. You have got to come to the place right now in this service tonight where you say, God, I give up trying to fight this battle myself. I don't have the power. I don't have the strength. I can't do it. I can't even give you any more promises, God. I hate my sin, but I can't promise you that I'll not do it again because I don't have the power. You have got to come to the place where you see how totally morally bankrupt you are and I am of ever breaking the power of sin in our own strength. Can't be done. Israel could not deli deliver themselves out of Egypt. But God had a plan. And he gave Moses a hint. And what, he, what he's really telling Moses, I'm going to weaken your enemy's power, little by little, and I'm going to harass your enemies. I'm going to give you a little taste of, of New Covenant theology. Pastor Carter brought a, a strong bit of it both in, in, this afternoon. I'm not going to be preaching the New Covenant probably until uh, July or August. But let me give you a taste of it. Listen to what God said to Israel and to Moses. I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under your burden. I will rid you out of your bondage. I will redeem you with a steadfast and harm and a great, with great judgments. I will take to you, I will take you to me for a people. I am the Lord which bringeth you out from under your burden. I will bring you in because I am the Lord. I will. I will, I will, not you will, or you can. God says, I can, I will, I'm God, I'm bringing you in. I'm going to bring you out to bring you in. And God never brings anybody out unless he takes them in. Out of sin into the glory of God. God said, your deliverance is my work. Your work is to believe. And that is the essence of the new covenant. God said, if you'll give me your confidence and faith and believe that I have agreed eternally to deliver you from the power of sin, that I am set on your deliverance, God determined Israel was going to be free and out of Egypt no matter what they did. And that brings me in just a moment to where we're going, a wonderful truth coming up in just a moment. You say, Pastor David, I didn't Jesus break the power of sin at the cross? He, he broke the power of sin in that he broke the devil's ability to hold and destroy a true servant of God, a believing servant of God. The power of Satan was broken among those who have exercised their faith in the finished work of Christ. But the devil is still God of this world, this earth. He is also yet a deceiver. He is a tempter. And we're going to be tempted, and there's going to be a deceiver coming against you. That's all a part of the scripture. But listen very closely to those who want to be free. They cry out to him. All those lingering desires, those powerful urges, those temptations. The Holy Spirit has been given to those who have faith in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is sent by the Father. The Holy Spirit is infused into our very bodies, into our spirits, our minds, and our bodies. He comes and he says, by the Spirit of God who abides in you, I will weaken your tempter. I will weaken your enemy. Folks, deliverance doesn't come overnight. That temptation, God has to come and weaken 
Nine plagues came against the enemy. And by the ninth plague before the death, before the firstborn died in Egypt, listen closely. God, with one plague after another, was taking away the influence, the strength, and the power of Egypt. So by the ninth plague, Egypt was bankrupt. Egypt had no power. It lost its influence in the world. It had been the world's power. Those those plagues didn't happen in ten days, folks. This this went over for months and months. And, and, and these plagues that came absolutely devastated the enemies of Israel. And that's what God does. If you just keep your eyes on Jesus and trust his word that he's at work in you, even though the temptation comes overwhelming at you, God said, just hold steady. Keep your faith strong. I'm at work. I am harassing your enemy. I am weakening those temptations. I am taking away their power. Number three, God secures you by the blood until you're totally delivered. Now, I want you to listen to something now. And if you get this in the spirit, it'll bring hope and, 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 and a complete desire to stand strong no matter what you're going through. Do you know that they were secured while they were still in Egypt? They came home that very day with sweat on their brow. They had just come from the brickyards to slay the lamb, to sprinkle the blood on the doorpost and the lentil of the house. They were still in Egypt, still in the place of bondage. And the blood secured them. You said, Brother Wilkson, I, I'm not quite free yet. I'm still being tempted. Last week I took a fall. Will you come back to the blood? Will you come to the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, I repent. Lord, I don't ever want to fall again. But I can't guarantee that you have to guarantee it to me you have to come now but oh Jesus I don't want to have to think that while I'm in a battle I'm going to die and go to hell I want you to know I love you Jesus with all my heart and I want to be free and I believe in the cleansing power of the sprinkled blood of Jesus on my sins and go to him put the blood on the doorpost and believe that he's going to get you out of Egypt but in the meantime he says I want to make you secure while I'm open the Red Sea. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God for the blood. Thank God that he will come. God's not out to destroy you. You that are in, in terrible, terrible plague of sin. I beseech you by the living mercies of God to hear the truth of the Lord, of the word of God. If you have a heart for him, if you love him, if you believe his word. So Jesus, you said, if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me, cleanse me. But oh God, I know I'm still in a battle. The battle's still raging. The tempter is still coming at me and it's still not totally weakened. Oh, God, I know you're helping me day by day. Day by day, I'm feeling strength come into me. But there's still that fear of falling. Folks, run to the blood. Gentlemen, run to the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, I trust that you'll keep me from falling. And you'll present me blameless before the throne with exceeding great joy. He secured them while they were still in Egypt. Keep that in mind, please. And by the way, they were no saints. Amos said they carried their idols with them the whole time. They were sprinkling the blood. They were packing their little idols. And yet the mercy of God, the great mercy of God, just said, I, I secure you as long as you're willing to walk with me. I'm going to take you out, but you've got to walk with me. You follow me now. 
You start feasting on the lamb now. That's the word of God. That's Jesus. He's the word. And what they were doing that night, they were feasting on the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, the final thing. I want you to follow me very closely now, please. Now, by the way, here's a great promise. Exodus 12, 23. I will not allow the destroyer to come in to your house to smite you. I'll not let the devil come in and smite you. I know that you're not really where you ought to be. I know I'm going to have to take you in the wilderness and teach you so much. But I'm not going to meantime, I'm not going to let the devil come into your house, into your heart, and kill you. Fellas, thank God for that right now. Just stop and say, thank you, Jesus. You're not going to let the devil have me. You're not going to let the devil kill me. Amen. Glory to God. This is the key to maintaining hope while you're still in the battle. If you don't have that, there's no hope. Finally, God himself must deal the death blow to that sin. Who, who dealt the death blow that night? Did they sneak out and Egypt, uh, the, did the Israelites kill the firstborn? You know, when God killed the firstborn, the, uh, when the Lord came and destroyed the firstborn in Egypt, it wasn't just judgment. It was just like God was looking at Israel and Pharaoh, representing the devil, had, had his fist around the neck of the children of Israel. And through the plagues, God had released all but one finger. And the devil's holding on with that one finger. He's losing his power, losing his hold. And that night when the firstborn, it was the Lord just taking that and yanking it and setting them free. It was the death blow to the last hold. God has to deal the death blow to sin. There comes a time when he does, he does just that. By his mercy and grace, he says, that's enough, devil. It's time for my children to go. You've had your time. And he comes. Dear friend of mine, uh, famous author, acknowledged that he was an alcoholic, prayed and fasted and did so many things, made promises that didn't work, but just begin to seek God and begin to see the truth of deliverance. And he, he told me one day, he said, Well, Dave, I got up one morning. I just got up one morning after fighting years, after years of turmoil and torment. I woke up one day and it was gone. There was no desire for alcohol. He said, I haven't touched a drop since. He said it was gone. God had dealt the death blow to it. Some of you are just about ready for God's hammer. He came down and hammered the enemy nine times and finally said, that's enough. I'm going to give you the death blow now. Oh, and when that happens, you pack your bags and you're on your way. Hallelujah. You're on your way to your next battle. Red Sea. But... When you get across the Red Sea, that's when you stand on the bank and you see all oh, the enemy's gone. There has been a death blow to everything and it can't come back. That means that there's no fear of falling back. You can't. God's put a river between you and your past. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, what I'm telling you now, these are thoughts. These are truths that you must deposit into your treasury right here. And when the devil comes to you, you just reach into the treasury and say, devil, I don't belong to you anymore. You don't have any more power. You have no more authority in my life. And you'll see, I promise you, you will see that if you fill your mind now with the living word of God and you stand on the truth, not your feelings, you don't walk by feelings. Your feelings 
or cheat you, they'll lie to you. You wake up not even feeling saved because your feelings are lying to you. You stand on the word of God. You say, I know, Lord, you know my heart. I want to be free. I'm sick of sin. I've come to you now. You start feeding your mind on the truth that God, through his blood, the son of his own blood, has cleansed you. And in the sight of God, even though you're fighting a battle, he loves you and you're accepted in his sight. You're accepted in his sight. Hallelujah. You've got to believe that he's going to keep you from falling. Who's going to keep you from falling? You're going to keep yourself from falling? No. He said, I'm your God. I'm your Lord. I will bring you into a good place. Hallelujah. Will you stand? Raise your hands and praise the Lord. Just thank him for his delivering power. Lift your hands, saints, everybody in this house. Let's thank him for our deliverance. Lord, thank you for delivering us from the power of the devil. Thank you, O oh God, for the promises of your word. How faithful you are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is so good. God is so faithful. He is our deliverer. Lord, you're going to break the power of sin. You're going to deliver, Lord, from the harassing of the enemy. Hallelujah. Satan cometh and hath nothing in me. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Balcony to main I want everybody, and I want you to get down here as fast as you can, all over this building, up in the balconies. I want you to get out of your seat and say, Brother, I want to walk out of here absolutely free. I want to know in my heart that I am, I, I am being delivered by the power of Jesus Christ, and I want to walk out of here as free as a man or woman can be. That's it. Come on. God bless you from everywhere. This is your night. Hallelujah. I want God to put faith in you. Can you can wait just a minute? Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, up in the balcony, you go to the, either stairs on either side and come down any aisle. Hallelujah. Folks, you're going to have to move in close to make room for these that are coming. Hear this? There's a young man came up here and said, Pastor Dave, here's what I want to be delivered from. For the flesh lusts us against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, the works of the flesh are plain, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, I mean, jealousies and divisions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings. And of such like, the which I tell you before, as I have said, I've also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And I want you to know that if you, if you persist in this, you are not secure. You persist in this and go your own way and turn away from the love of Jesus Christ. Then you are not secured. And this is very, very true. They that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You've got to know that. But I'm telling you now, if you have a repentant heart, and if you have a desire, the Holy Spirit's the one who's put that desire in you. That desire didn't come out of some goodness of your own heart. That was planted by the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit comes and plants that desire, He means to take you through. If you'll just follow Him, that's all it takes. You have to follow Him. How many are ready to follow the Lord all the way? Raise your hand. You came forward you're ready to follow Him right now. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. now. Now listen to me, please. Listen to me. Your prayer should not be for security. You get that automatically by just following him in faith and love and repentance. He will secure you. Yes, he's faithful. But more than that, you say, Lord Jesus, more than anything else, I, I, no, I, I, you're not pray yet, but more than anything else, I, I want to enter into that 
wonderful place of rest. I want that promised land. I don't want this burden anymore. See, that sin's a terrible burden, isn't it? That thing is that keeps it. What a horrible burden. It brings such condemnation, fear and guilt and emptiness and dryness and the fear the wrath of God and the judgment of God. The Lord doesn't want you to live that way. God's not mad at you. Do you understand that? How many can say amen to that? Amen. God's not mad at me. He wants, he's, God is set on delivering me. You've got to believe that right now. God wants nothing more than to set me free. God wants me to enjoy his presence and enjoy life. He's not mad at you. He wants you to be free. Will you follow him now? Come on, let's, let's, let's believe God for a death blow to that right now. Pray with me. Jesus, Jesus cleanse, me. cleanse me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Purge me. Purge me. Sanctify, me. Sanctify me. I know, Jesus, I know, Jesus. You, put you put faith in my heart by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Faith, to be faith to be free. I want to be free. Want to be free. And even that you put in my heart. In my heart. I'll follow you, Jesus. Follow you. Just, lead me. Just lead me. Quicken my spirit. Quicken my spirit. Draw me to yourself, O oh Lord. I believe now now. that you can do it it. just as you've promised it, it. that I can be free, free. that you love me, me. you promised to deliver me, me. and I come now to you, Lord, Lord. to claim that promise, promise. that you are a mighty God, God. and you're set on my deliverance, deliverance. and you will take me by the hand, You you will fight every demon. You will destroy the power of Satan. And you will bring me into a place of peace and rest in you. I believe you now. Oh God, kill my sin. Put a death blow to it. So it has no more hold on my life. I believe you can do it. And I'm going to trust you until it's finished. Now raise your hands and thank him right now. Just raise your hands and thank him. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Look at me for just a moment. Isn't God good? Isn't he marvelous? All the love of Jesus that that no matter what we go through, he says, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you in. How many can say that God already brought you out of the power of darkness? God brought you out. All right. You don't serve it. God's going to leave you stuck in the wilderness. So if God brought you out, he intends to bring you in. Hallelujah. How many have been brought into that place of freedom? Raise your hands. That freedom in the Holy Spirit. That freedom in the Lord. Delivered from the power of darkness and sin. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. This is the conclusion of the message.